Hey guys, this is John. So I started working with a new student recently. He's rated about 1100 in chess.com standard. He plays primarily 30 minute games, which I think is an excellent time control for improvement, by the way. And in preparation for our first session, I was looking through some of his games, just trying to get a feel for how he plays. And this position from one of his games caught my eye. So if you'd like to treat this as a mini training exercise, pause your video and try to figure out the strongest continuation for black. So black to move, what should black do? Okay, I think every decent player will treat this position in roughly the same way, thought process wise. So black to move. Now in every position in chess, you have candidate moves. Candidate moves are just the moves that you're considering. You can only end up playing one move at a time, of course, in a chess position. But it's good to have candidates because if you were just locked into your first instincts all the time or played the first move that comes to mind, you probably aren't going to get very far. You're going to suffer a lot of defeats unless you have Magnus Carlsen instincts or something. And the trick is you have to consider enough candidate moves to give yourself a chance, but you can't usually consider every possible move on the board, except in like very rare circumstances, maybe end games and such, uh, without feeling overwhelmed. You know, if, if you were black here and you try to consider every legal move, you just run out of time in a timed game. So it's impossible. So the trick with candidate moves is uh, considering enough important moves to give yourself the best chance of finding the right one, but not overwhelming yourself too. And one thing you should always consider when it comes to candidate moves are your forcing moves. If you've watched my climbing the tactics training ladder, you'll already know about this, but your forcing moves are your checks and your captures. Okay, those are the most important candidate moves and you must always consider them provided you have the time because they give you the best chance of predicting the future in the position. You know if you put your opponent in check that they will have to respond to that check, right? And there's just a narrow amount of ways that they can respond to it. You don't even have to consider other replies that they will do. Also, if you make a capture, typically your opponent's gonna have to capture back or play some other forcing move in reply. Because if you capture something, you might be ahead in material. Your opponent's probably going to have to even up the material or do something about that situation. So checks and captures you always want to consider because they give you the best chance of predicting the future. Now, how does that apply to this position? So black to move. Black has no checks that they can play. So we can disregard those. There's no legal checks. But there are three possible captures. Okay, so there's bishop takes f3. There's e takes d4, and there's knight takes d4. Now, any decent player is going to pretty quickly identify those three captures here, right? And they may look at other moves, but they'll look at those captures first and probably only look at other moves if they're unsatisfied with the captures somehow or if they suspect that some other move will be as good or better than one of these captures, okay? But very important to proceed through these, through these three captures first and try to identify if one of them gives us the advantage. Now, if in this position, if you said bishop takes f3 was the strongest move for black, you are correct. So capturing the knight. Now, in capturing the knight, white is going to recapture. Any other move is just bad. Probably they'll take with the bishop, because if they take with the pawn, their pawns would be doubled up. That's a bit undesirable for white, so we can logically assume that white will take with the bishop. And now if you were very accurate here, you would see that black would want to play knight takes d4 and grab the pawn on d4, which is no longer defended because we got rid of that knight on f3 a couple moves ago. So bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, knight takes d4. This bags black a clear pawn, and I think black can be pretty satisfied with this, having won a pawn already on move 6. So backing up, let's look at those other captures because, again, this is the thought process that you'd want to go through. Maybe you look at bishop takes f3 right away and you happen to be correct that it's the strongest one. Maybe you have very good chess instincts, but for most people, you're going to have to work through these and uh, peruse through those continuations associated with these to find the best move. So in the game, my student played knight takes d4, and quite tellingly, he only spent five seconds on this move. That's not enough time to properly cycle through those three captures. So. When I saw that he had played knight takes d4, and especially when I saw that he had spent five seconds on it, that was an indication to me as a chess teacher that this person uh, needs to work on their time management and also considering their candidate moves. 
Because on knight takes d4, white gets a chance to take with their knight. And now, unfortunately, my student compounded their problems because instead of playing the strongest move, e takes d4 here, which would attack white's knight, they played bishop takes e2. And this is especially bad because now white can play knight d takes e2. And once we count the material, we'll realize that white has won a piece for a pawn in that transaction. So their knight was able to take the bishop on d4 and then come back and recapture on e2. So as it turned out in the game, the opponent played knight uh, c takes e2 instead. And my student was kind of let off the hook. He was able to take on d4 and the game continued, but he could have been punished right there. Now the other move is back here playing e takes d4 for black. And that too is less strong than bishop takes f3 because it doesn't win anything. White will play knight takes d4, and I think white's a bit better here. White is better developed. You can see that black has not brought out their kingside pieces at all, and uh, I think most everyone would prefer to be white. So candidate moves are important. Also, move orders are very important. That's the other part of this, this position I'm showing you, because if you get locked into one particular move order, one particular candidate move even, you're hurting yourself. Okay, and especially in positions where there are multiple clear candidate moves. And I've noticed that with lower rated players is they get blinders on, they focus on just one continuation, and oftentimes they pursue that continuation quite far. That didn't happen in this case because my student played the move in five seconds. Like that's bad on a couple of counts. But I've noticed this situation where lower rated players will, it's almost like they can't tear themselves away from just this one particular move. Oftentimes it's even a forcing move. And they spend so much time looking at it, they don't consider anything else in the position. And that's why it's good to have candidates right from the get-go. So you have this mental checklist of moves that you can proceed down. So just to recap this position, let me take away the arrows here. If you're black here and it's your move, and those three moves are not coming to mind, bishop takes f3, e takes d4, and knight takes d4, then that's probably an indication you need to work on identifying candidate moves. And if it was hard for you to identify which of those candidate moves was best, then probably you got to work on your move orders and maybe your calculation in general. Because uh, upon reflection, you should be able to find that bishop takes f3, get rid of that knight, which is defending the d4 pawn, is going to win you a clear pawn. Anyways, I hope this was valuable to you. I'm going to try to post more of these short little training tips videos. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. All right. Bye, guys.